Hey, hi, Pooja. So this is Hari. Uh, so I got your profile for the interview for the role of AWS and DevOps. Uh, no vacancies available with us. Uh, hope HR has been explained you the you know uh, requirement and uh, what is the you know uh, job description everything. Yes, uh, I think uh, it's the right time to start, right? Uh, hi, Hari. Yes, you can start. Okay, good. So yeah, uh, can you please uh, no, tell about yourself uh, so that we can get it started? Mm -hmm. I wanted to know a few more about you. Yeah, so first of all, uh, myself, uh, Pooja. So actually, I have a uh, six plus year, years of experience in cloud computing, which is AWS, Azure and DevOps and all. Uh, so actually, I have completed my degree uh, B uh, in Sadraja College of Engineering. And uh, as of now, I'm working in uh, AWS, I mean, multi-cloud and DevOps and that. Uh, so currently, um, my work profile will be uh, monitoring and uh, actually my career start with monitoring and troubleshooting uh, backup related issues and um, uh, and preparing backup reports using Microsoft uh, Excel sheet. And then uh, in AWS, uh, uh, I, I mean, in AWS, I have a, uh, experience of EC2, uh, IAM, and S3 VPC, and CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and uh, Route 53, and other AWS services also. Uh, in EC2, I'm creating EC2 instances, and also EBS volume security, managing security group, AMI, and the managing snapshots, everything and all. Uh, and part of load balancing and auto scaling. In IAM, uh, I have, uh, I mean, uh, creating and managing the IAM groups, uh, users, policies, roles, MFA. Uh, so managing the access KD and the access KD and all. And, um, so S3, uh, S3 also managing the uh, managing the ticket permissions, S3 storage versioning, so uh, some other options also. In VPC, in networking, I have a strong knowledge of networking. Uh, so because I'm, I'm actually creating and managing the VPC subnet, central gateway, NAT gateway, pairing connections, everything and all. And then monitoring, from to the monitoring, uh, we have used CloudWatch. And in CloudWatch, we have monitoring and managing the AWS services and the managing uh, managing the alarm also. And the uh, logs we have used uh, CloudTrail. Uh, so by using this tool, uh, we have uh, managing uh, we, we are managing the logs of AWS resources as well. And uh, other AWS services like SNS, Glacier, RDS, MongoDB, uh, Lambda, and uh, some other working AWS really also. And then come to the DevOps. Uh, so I have worked on the Python Boto 3 three uh, and Lambda also. Uh, so uh, here I have used uh, Lambda automation. So when I want to automation uh, schedule based automation or ma uh, manual automation, that is, we have used Python Boto 3 three, and then uh, we have used Terraform, uh, like uh, Terraform security security uh, uh, concept, everything and all. And um, for Linux environment, we have used the Ansible. Okay, uh, this is a superior configuration management tool. So we have used uh, Ansible. Uh, and uh, for CI/CD, we have used uh, um, Jenkins. So Jenkins is a centralized one. So here we have used Docker and Kubernetes as well. And uh, finally, in the, when come to the Docker organization, so we have used Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, so everything is also over. Uh, and handled uh, AWS and uh, AWS services plus the tool, tools also. So that's all about my roles and responsibilities. Okay, that's great. Actually, <clears throat> you are being into like various services and uh, various DevOps tools. Appreciating. Yes, I think uh, we can have you know uh, some technical uh, questions. I'll you know uh, shoot it against you. Like uh, you try to answer wherever you have a comfortable knowledge in that. Okay. So yeah, so okay. you know, I understood like uh, you are uh, uh, having an idea and exposure with uh, AWS, uh, IAM and uh, EC2, VPCs, all those major services you said. So let me start from IAM. So say for an example, I have a requirement of uh, creating customized IAM policy. Okay. Uh, my policy, mm -hmm. right? My my client requirement is about uh, uh, my users, right? They are not supposed to uh, specifically uh, change anything in uh, networking related uh, uh, settings and services and uh, existing uh, things. Okay. But uh, they do need to create, uh, you know, uh, resources such as uh, you know any any kind of resources they can create and delete and modify whenever they need. 
so only they are predominant thing is to you know go with the vpc related and networking component they are not supposed to modify uh, so and they supposed to not do any changes here so in this case how will you prepare for uh, designing as an architect how will you plan for uh, designing this uh, iam uh, architecture and how your uh, policies all uh, going to be can you brief the architecture um, yeah, Hari. Actually, uh, when come to the IEM, first, uh, uh, whatever you want, first we need to create a user. Then, then we need to give, give the current, I mean, uh, respective permissions and all. So when come to the policy here, we have uh, policies types are there. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, the policy types will be customer managed policy and then uh, AWS managed policy. When you go to the AWS managed policy, a policy, it's uh, to bottom going to take care of AWS. So already they have designed. Uh, so based on your requirement, uh, based on your use case, uh, you can select, you can uh, you can select the respective uh, policy and done. But otherwise, if you want to customize uh, uh, some, like, uh, suppose I wanted to uh, specific uh, requirement for networking, I want to specific requirement for SP, something like that, then we can go with the customer managed policy only. So when you go to the customer managed policy, so step by step we can create. Other first step we need to select the respective uh, service itself if you wanted to create a uh, policy and all. So first we need to select networking. If uh, you said, uh, I mean, my knowledge, uh, the person is belongs to the networking team. So the person is belongs to the uh, L1 citizens we need to uh, network I think, uh, Pooja, you access. need to speak close to your mic, it seems. Your voice is, no, it's going down slowly. Uh, can you speak near to your mic? Uh, one second. One second, please. Hari, uh, my voice is clear too now. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So when come to the customer managed policy, uh, so the uh, uh, I think the person is belongs to the uh, networking team, uh, the networking L1 team or networking L2 team. In the sense, we need to give the correct uh, permission for him. For example, the person is belongs to the networking L1 team. We need to give the read only access. So when you go to the read only access, we don't want to go with the customer managed policy because already uh, we have a cons we have a option called AWS managed policy. By using the option, we can get. So, uh, if you want to give that uh, respective permission, for example, uh, particularly read some, uh, particularly uh, access some network, something like that, you can go with the customer managed policy. So, the customer managed policy, the first step we need to select the uh, which services we are, we are going to create a policy. So, first we need to select a service, for example, we need to select VPC. So, the next one we need to select a resource. So, what type of resource the person is going to access, for example, read or write or delete. So, delete something or do not delete, delete something. So, like that, we need to select the correct permission. The third one, we need to give the resource. Uh, the, the particular policy is applicable to all the resource or, or any particular person. Listen, just we need to select the IAM user. So, then finally, we can create a user. Sorry, sorry, we can create a policy. So, by using the customer manager policy, we can actually do this. Okay, I think uh, you are wrongly understood my question, it seems. My requirement was different, but you are uh, explaining more about AWS policy and customer managed. Anyway, we can move on to next question. Uh, so, yeah, when you have uh, uh, two uh, AWS accounts uh, we have in our environment, imagine one is going to be production, another one is uh, my, you know, pre-prod. So in pre-prod, uh, whatever the application I tested, the instance, okay, at top of instance I tested, uh, which is my Kali Linux, okay, I've deployed some security related application, which is worked fine. I need to migrate this instance uh, from pre-prod account to production account. So what is the easiest way you can suggest or you can recommend uh, to achieve this? Uh, actually, you want to migrate one instance Actually, one, one instance available. I have two on AWS account. accounts. I have a two AWS ah. accounts. One is production, another one is pre production. I have a mm. Kali Linux instance running in pre prod account. I've mm. tested one of my security related application, which is worked as expected. So now I would like to move that. I would like to migrate that uh, pre prod uh, Kali Linux instance from pre prod account to prod account. Okay, so what is the easiest way would you suggest and what is the easiest strategy you would suggest to migrate that instance from pre-prod to prod? Yeah, actually I can suggest first we need to take a backup of whole uh, Kali Linux VM. 
so the option called AMI. So we need to convert as a AMI. So when you have an instance, the option called uh, you need to take an image. Uh, I mean, up to bottom you can take a backup. So once your backup is completed, it will comes under the AMI uh, session. So that uh, the, the uh, once AMI session, you you can get the option called share with another account. Okay. So once your backup is completed, once it is showing available state, then you can share the AMI to another production account. The once it is shared, then uh, your from production account you can create the one more EC2 instance by using the AMI. So this one I can suggest. Okay, so you are asking to take a AMI backup, then share that AMI from pre-prod account to production account, then launch the new instance in production account, is it? Yes, yes. Okay, so when I am trying in the same way, in production account, when I try to create an EC2 instance, right, I am getting the access denied or, you know, uh, I'm, I am I do not, I am able to see the AMI, share the AMI in production account, but uh, when I am creating an instance, right, I am getting access denied or some other uh, errors I am getting. So in this case, what are the things you will check in perspective of troubleshooting? Uh, when come to the troubleshooting first, uh, from my pre-production account, I wanted to uh, first I wanted to take a backup. Once backup is completed, first I need to launch the AMI. Uh, from pre-production. So this, the AMI, I mean the instance is successfully launched. Uh, so then uh, that is the first step. Okay, from pre-production it is successfully uh, created one more EC2 instance in the sense that is, a, that is how we need to check the, we need to check, the, we need to, I mean, um, we, uh, that is how we can troubleshoot. That is the first step. And otherwise, uh, I wanted to check the uh, EC2 instance configurations, everything and all. Yeah. Uh... Okay, I'll ask you in this way. Okay, you are not near to the answer. So what I'll do, in the pre-prod account, you have encrypted your AMI using KMS key. Okay, now after encryption, by default, uh, whatever they are in our environment, it will be encrypted. Right? After encryption, you are sharing that AMI to prod account. Now tell me, since it's uh, encrypted in the source account, what are the you know uh, flexibility things you will do before sharing it to production account? What do you think? Will it work if it is encrypted in the source account? If we share simply, will it work in the production account? Understand my question? Yeah, I understand, but I don't know. Okay. Have you never been into any type of encryption kind of works in your project? Yeah, actually, uh, we have worked on the S3 bucket, the kind of uh, encryption. So okay. That's why I'm able to answer this. Okay. All right. Fine. So maybe we can move on to next uh, question. This could be like uh, more into your uh, no? VPC. Uh, like, uh, can you tell me like uh, what are the services you have a good exposure in VPC point of view? You mean you are asking the options? What are the VPC? things you worked in VPC level? Can you explain? Um, I mean VPC creation, subnet creation, and then route tables, uh, internet gateways, and then NAT gateway. Uh, and theories and uh, transit gateway and network security group. All right. <clears throat> so then there is a question for you. Um, then you have a uh, VPC. I'm in my account. I'm using three regions. Okay. Uh, so what is the easiest way uh, you can suggest for making a communication between these three? uh you know vpcs and uh, between across uh, regions yeah i can suggest peering uh, uh i mean you wanted to come com you wanted to communicate a three v three vpc regions right mm. yeah yeah so i can uh yeah i can suggest transit gateway okay it's not peering 
So mm -hmm. I can suggest transit gateway by using the transit gateway we can achieve this. So we need to create a three different VPC in three different regions. So once you where VPC is created based on the VPC, we need to create the three instances with, uh, with different regions and all. So once you created the VPC, once you created the uh, instance, after that we need to go with the option called transit gateway. So once you created the transit gateway, we need to make a connections. So once your connection is successfully established, then we can achieve this. Then we three regions, uh, I mean three regions uh, instances and all. Okay, so I have a two account uh, pre prod and production. I wanted to make a communication, but uh, this time, right, it has to done through my you know a regional hub account. So how will you implement regional hub account in general AWS account? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat regional hub account? Yeah. So do you have any uh -huh. regional hub account in your environment? Uh, no. No, you're not been into. Okay. Fine. I'm done with my part. I'll get back to you. Okay. So I'll update the feedback to HR. They'll get back to you. Okay. Thank you.